we are going to do a little tutorial on how I arrange my needles when I am knitting a sock magic loop. This is a plain vanilla sock. This is a DK weight yarn that I'm using. I'm actually using the pattern by Kay, this crazy sock lady, her DK weight vanilla sock pattern. But I arrange my needles a little bit differently after I finish my heel flap and turn. So before and during the time that I pick up these gusset stitches, I rearrange my needles and I knit the rest of the sock with the new needle arrangement. So I've had some questions on how I do this. I find it much easier to work with an even number of stitches on both needle one and needle two when I'm doing magic loop, as opposed to having a small number on one needle and then all of your gusset stitches and your instep stitches on your other needle. So here's how I do this. You can see, these are my instep stitches. This is my heel flap and my heel turn. So I had been working flat to do this section of the heel of the sock. I've been knitting back and forth, which is why my working yarn is coming from stitch one on this needle one. If I were to put these together and if you were to pretend these gusset stitches were here and I was magic looping, this would be the needle setup. I would pull out this back needle and I would start knitting. But obviously we don't wanna do that because then we would have big holes here, right? We need to pick up our gusset stitches. So normally, and we're gonna do the same thing, normally in most sock patterns, you are going to need to change your beginning of round. So currently the begin beginning of round is here. This is where we started our sock. This is our beginning of round, but we are going to need to change that. Most patterns will tell you to do this. And again, this is much easier to rearrange your needles when you are doing a vanilla sock. You can do it if you have patterned stitches on your instep, but um, it can be a little bit trickier. But if there's no patterning here, then it's pretty simple because we are gonna be splitting our stitches right about here, right in the middle. There's 24 stitches on this back needle, so we're gonna split 12 and 12 when we get to that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull out this back needle so we can start knitting. Because we've been working flat, I have a stitch here. We're just gonna knit this. I have 14 stitches on this needle, so we're gonna knit the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where normally it would tell you to place your new beginning of round marker right in the middle of your heel turn stitches. But because we're knitting magic loop and because I'm actually going to make this my first stitch for the beginning of round, I'm not going to place a marker here. I'm just going to pull my back needle through. So now these stitches are on the cord and there's a gap here in between my instep stitches and where I will eventually be picking up these gusset stitches. So right now there's just a gap and that's fine. We're gonna leave that as is. This is my new beginning of round, my new stitch one. And now at, because we'll have our needles positioned like this going forward, I don't need to put a stitch marker there. You can if you want to, but I do not. So now we're gonna knit these seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So I have my first seven stitches of my beginning of round. Now we're gonna pick up these instep stitches and we're gonna do that according to how your pattern directs you to do it. So now I have my original seven, which is split right in the middle of my heel turn. So my new beginning of round, these seven stitches, and then the gusset stitches that I picked up. Now, when we start decreasing for our gusset, 
decreases, you're gonna start decreasing before the instep. So now I go ahead and put a stitch marker right here. And I'm going to pull my back needle through so it's on these stitches because I'm going to need to knit these now. So I've got my working yarn in the back. I've got my 24 instep stitches right here. I'm only gonna knit 12 of them because I'm splitting, I changed the beginning of my round here. And so I'm changing where the end of needle one ends. So instead of it ending all the way over here, we're gonna split it right in the middle. And then that way we're gonna have exactly half the stitches on each of our needles. So I'm gonna knit 12. One, two, and 11, 12. Okay, now I'm just going to take what was my needle one and I'm gonna move it to the back. Well, it is still needle one, but now it's to the back and needle two is to the front, just for the moment, because now we're gonna knit the back half of our stitches. And we can actually pull this through as well. We can put these seven stitches from our back half of our heel flap. We can now put these on needle two. Now you see we picked up those gusset stitches, so we have a straight line of stitches. There's no more gap. That was these right here. And we're about to do the same thing. We're gonna pick up these stitches and that will fill in this gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just pulling out my back needle like you normally would for Magic Loop. So we're gonna knit these 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And because we're going to do our gusset decreases right on the other side of our inset stitches, which is what your pattern should be telling you if you're knitting a cuff down sock, then we're going to put a stitch marker right here and that is going to tell me where I need to do my decreases. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pick up my gusset stitches exactly as I did on the other side. Now we're gonna just go ahead and knit the remainder of these seven heel turn stitches. Okay, we'll turn our work, pull our needle cord through. My working yarn to the back. And now you can see I have rearranged my needles and I've added a stitch marker on either side of the instep here and here where I will be doing my decreases to form the gusset. And these are my gusset stitches here and here that I've picked up. And so this stitch count on this side is never gonna change. These are your 24 instep stitches. They're just split in half, which is why it's easier if you're doing a vanilla sock instead of something patterned that has a pattern going right across here in the front. And, um, and these are the stitches that are gonna get decreased until you're back down to your original stitch count. So I'll go ahead and do a row of decreases so you can just sort of see what that looks like with the new beginning of round and with the stitch markers in place. And then the cool thing about this, I will tell you, 
in just a moment because it has another added benefit. So most sock patterns are going to tell you to do your gusset decreases the same way. So you are going to knit to three stitches before your instep. And I've added a stitch marker there so I never need to um, figure out exactly where that is because it can be kind of tricky, I think. So I just knit to three stitches before my stitch marker. Okay, then you do the decrease that your pattern calls for. And then you slip the marker. And then you do whatever it is you're doing on your instep. In my case, it's just vanilla, so I'm just gonna knit across these. But if you were doing a pattern, you would do your pattern stitches. Um, it is perfectly possible to rearrange your needles like this with a pattern in the front. It might just be a little more fiddly for you, but that's up to you if you wanna do that or not. So I'm pulling my back needle through. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna knit across the second half of my instep stitches. Okay, until I get to the stitch marker. And then on this side, I am gonna do my decreases. So you're always doing your decreases on the gusset side of your stitch marker, never on the inset stitches. So you go ahead and do the decrease that your pattern calls for here. And then you just go ahead and, oops, knit the remainder of the stitches on needle two. Okay, so now that I've done that, I will pull my cord through. Now I'm back to my needle one. So this is why I do not put a stitch marker at the beginning of round because honestly, it would just fall off and you'd have to just keep maintaining it and it would be sort of fiddly. But I always know that my heel section is always beginning of round. So I know this is my front needle, that's my back needle. And then I'll go ahead and knit around plain and I'll decrease and knit around plain and I'll do that until these stitches are back down to my original stitch count that I started from. And the great thing about this is that when you do your toe decreases, you can leave your these stitch markers in place. Once you get back down to the original stitches, you'll just keep knitting around. And when you get to the point where you're ready to do your toe decreases, you're gonna do your toe decreases on either side of the stitch marker. So you can just leave these in place for the rest of your sock and when you're ready to start doing your toe decreases, you're gonna decrease on this side and you're gonna decrease on this side. And the same thing over here. So you never need to rearrange your needles again. You never need to figure out where you need to put your toe decreases at. You're already set up for the entire rest of your sock once you've gone ahead and made that change. And I just find it a lot less fiddly to have the exact same number of stitches on both sides or on both needles. So I hope that that is helpful. And I'll just show you here is a finished sock that I have done in this yarn. And you can see this is what the gusset looks like. Here's the decreases. And here is the toe that I did. And I never moved my stitch marker. So this line is 100% in line with the gusset. And the same thing on the other side. And that is how I rearrange my needles for my gusset decreases. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching.